Alright, many blessings to you out there. I thought I'd give uh, session two on yoga of finances. I say finances because it's not just about money, it's about being able to manage our whole portfolio or lack thereof at this point and create a portfolio of abundance that is uh, connected to savings, connected to being uh, debt free, manifesting enough but not so much where you're having to put so much energy into your money where it's uh, there's no time for being present, there's no time for vacation, there's no time for really being um, in your center. So this is really about the yoga of finances, being in your center, being at peace, being in presence while you do this. So why am I teaching this? As I said, Veronica has really encouraged me to do this, my beloved. Um, just to give you a little background, I've been in the corporate world uh, from out, out of college into the corporate world, have had an entrepreneurial spirit um, through my life, but also have this mechanism of me uh, being more of a jack of all trades rather than a master of one. Um, so I really like to play in a lot of different arenas. Um, and my weakness probably would be focusing solely on one thing and putting all my energy there without having the ability to play in any other arena. So, um, and then um, that would probably be one of the p places that's an asset but a weakness. So we want to be able to look at both where our weaknesses are and where our assets are and what's the flip side of that. Um, so why I'm sharing this stuff is because I have been able to manifest a certain amount of wealth uh, post being in the corporate world. I was worked for Nestle in sales and then I was in medical sales selling um, instruments and devices, positioning systems for the operating room and then I went in and then I had a few years, nobody really knows this probably from the YouTube world, I don't talk about it much. I did some acting in there, some commercials and discovered that wasn't my gift or at that time I wasn't evolved in that gift enough to really manifest um, financially for that. Um, and then uh, and then I was in biotech sales uh, after I left medical sales went into acting for a few years and then was in biotech and then started uh, practicing yoga and then windows started to open up for teaching yoga and some doorways uh, at one time I had studied massage so that came into the picture and then doorways started to open up in working with shamanic work and cranial sacral work and then um, all the while I was working with meditation, so doorways open in working with meditation and life guidance, spiritual guidance. So I've had my hands in the arenas of many different places, but in the last decade and a half, a lot more has been focused on um, the uh, spiritual arts. And, and I've been able to save money during all of this time. I've lost money, I've been to zero three or four times in my life, and am now uh, in a pretty good position. Not to go into my specifics about my finances or my what I have as far as um, a portfolio and homes. I don't really feel comfortable going into that today, but I do have um, multiple homes and I do have a portfolio of stocks and uh, savings and, um, and uh, I'm sitting in a position that's fairly good. And this is due to um, um, having a balanced approach to uh, my financial reality. So step number two, we started last week with setting an ideal scene, going through um, a much more stringent one year and then a one liner for the three to five to 10 year plans. The one year we wanted to look at um, what are our expenses, what are our, um, what do we make in a month, and then what do we spend in a month? And if you even know fixed and variable costs, what are our fixed costs, the absolutes, our car payment, our rent, anything that we does not change in, in an expense every month is our fixed cost. So we wanna add those up. Those are, there's no way to cha change those. There's no way to spend less at this time. And then our variable costs, which I didn't go into this detail last week, so you may want to be adding this this week. Our variable costs are going to be the costs that can fluctuate. Gasoline, food, um, 
uh, gifts, uh, play, movies, etc. All of our additional spending that we make that goes changes every week to month. Okay, so we add up what our average, what our fixed costs are, and our average variable costs in a month, and then multiply that over 12 months, and that's what we have for a budget for a year. Same thing with what we make in in a month. Our, what is our fixed income? What do we make absolute guaranteed every month? And if there's variable incomes that change every month, what is that? So you may be, you may sell essential oils or you may sell a product that's on the side um, that, var that varies and varies depending on how much you sell in a month. So those would be, that would be a variable income. And what's the average reaping of that monthly? So that gives you a forecast rather than a real um, number. That gives you a forecast of a budget. The budget is a forecasted number that you expect to spend and make. And then that's going to vary by week to meet, week or month to month. I do a budget for weekly. So my commitment to myself is I don't spend more than what I make in a week. And I and my weekly income varies. I have a fixed income and then I have a variable income. So my fixed income, I attempt to, I've attempted to set my life up in a way to have a fixed income that covers all of my bases, that supports my bottom line. So that, co that supports my fixed costs, my fixed expenses, and then it covers my minimum variable costs. So what's What's the minimum I need in a, in a week, in a month, in a year to get by? So that's going to be your minimum of food. That's not going to be, that may be going out some, but what's that minimum? What's your minimum that you need, okay? So you need to know that number right now, the true minimum of what you need to get by without going in debt. And that's the fixed amount of income you're going to want to have to cover you every week and every month and every year. That's what you're shooting for. So the way that I, and, and this, other people are gonna teach it other ways, but I'm, I'm teaching in a way that creates something incrementally that grows over time. This is not about big hits and home runs. This is about base hits on a regular basis and slowly growing a income and a portfolio that supports you into an ease in retirement at a very early age, whatever that age is if you choose, okay? Now, how do we, so I'm going to teach it from a place that, the way that I live it. So what I live is, I set my fixed income. Can I, I'm intending to create a fixed income that covers my basis. So if I don't have any variable income in a month, this will cover me. So let's say that's a thousand dollars a week. I'm just going to give a number. It's an easy, flat number. Let's say you spend $1,000 a week, which would be a little over $4,000 a month because there's really about four and a half weeks in a month. Between four weeks and two to three days for most months. So in that, in that week, let's say it's, um, I spend $1,000 a week. Um, right now this is what i look at in my um without me knowing without reducing anything right now i spend a thousand dollars a week by average which means i spend um approximately a thought fifty two thousand dollar no how many weeks are there in a month there are 56 weeks so that would mean there's fit you spend fifty six thousand dollars in a year so that may be high so but let's go on that basis because it's easy to have that $1,000 mark. So if I spend 50, this is going to be a different um, um, example than in week one because we were figuring on making that we were making 30000 So let's say we recognize that we, in a variable, in, in our cost right now, we're spending 1000 a month, which is 56000 in a year. And we recognize we're going in deep debt this way. So what do we want to do? We want to look at where our, our variable costs are and what we can reduce there. So every dollar we reduce in expenses is directly takes away immediately what we have to earn plus whatever percentage in taxes. So 
any dollar we reduce in spending is going to be a huge benefit, a huge boon in releasing stress from us. So we want to look at how we, how much we spend, what can we reduce in spending, and look, that's in variable costs. Now looking at fixed costs, are there any fixed costs like our car payment or anything else that we can change in this year? And when can we change that? And can we reduce that cost? And is that something we want to do? Is it more value? Then the question is, is it more valuable for me to be spending a little bit more rent and have that little extra luxury? Or is it more valuable to me to be working less and not have that extra luxury? That's, that's the cost benefit. So if it's more valuable for me to have an extra amount of time in my day and have a little less luxury in my home setting or in my car setting, then it would it not be, is it more valuable for me to reduce the quality of the car or the home that I'm living in? Those would be addressing the fixed costs. Would it be more beneficial for me to eat out one time or two times less in a week so I could have that time to myself without having to work to earn it or without, without it being in debt and having to pay interest on that and really looking at an end goal of never knowing when I can pay it off. So this week two is really about getting down in the nitty gritty about addressing fixed costs and variable costs in our budget in, in the one year still. Now I want to take another step. So another step with this would be beyond really getting to the nitty gritty of what we can take out as far as spending. What are the things that we can do on the other side to manifest more money? So this would be looking at this time looking at um, is there any form of, besides my fixed income, is there another form of variable income that I could create? Um, and if you have no idea about this, then we need to start looking into what kind, if I don't have any form of way to create variable income, what am I excited about? Besides my fixed income job, and let's say my fixed income job is 30 hours a week and I still am willing to put in if I'm really enjoying um, something in my life that could be work if I put in another 15 to 20 hours a week and something I absolutely love that I could could put time to and create more money it's got to be something I'm really going to love and enjoy so what is it that you love and enjoy that you'd like to make a little bit extra money on Maybe it's teaching yoga or meditation or selling a product that you believe in. There's all these different products out there that you could become a, a wholesaler for in many different ways. You could sell supplements or uh, health products or essential oils. Um, there's different ways of doing that through network marketing, through representing a product on the side that has nothing to do with network marketing where you just sell water purifiers that it's a purifier that you believe in and um, you get, you make four or five hundred dollars per sale. So whatever it is, what is that, what's something I really, I'm really excited about and if it's some play, something that it's not selling but it's that you're working so maybe it's a teaching some form of class at a community college where I can earn a little extra money but it's teaching something I love not just to make the money you already have a fixed income that's making your money and if uh, the figures that I last looked at 80% of us at least 80% of us do not enjoy the work that we're doing so most likely your fixed income in the beginning is whatever you're doing is most likely not your end goal and not something you absolutely love. So that